My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with the Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days to Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. This is episode number 87 of the 120 Days to Jam Mathematics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at about three questions on the limits of a function representing the various ways jump sets question on that limit. And in the previous episode, we solved a complex question on that limit. And that is one of the highest or most difficult questions jump can set on that limit. If you are able to answer that and you understand these three other questions, then you are good to go when it comes to limits. Remember, sometimes we cannot figure out things directly. We just know what would happen as we approach, as we go closer and closer. So the limit, it can get to as you approach a particular value. That is what we look at on the limits of a function. And it is a calculus topic. Yes. Now look at this question. We are told to find the limit of this function as s approaches 2 or as s tends to 2. What is the limit of this function? Obviously, if you substitute s to be 2, you see that the denominator will already give you 0 and you get an undefined answer. So, direct substitution is not an option. We simplify it. Looking at this numerator, this is s squared minus 4. There is a way we can simplify here. If here is s squared, how do we get squared from here so that life can start from there? From indices, we know that this is the same thing as s squared minus 2 squared over s minus 2. We actually did not change anything because 2 squared is the same thing as 2. Nothing changed. From here, we know that once you have a minus here and you have two numbers that are squared, they will give you s plus 2 and s minus 2. Because if you multiply here, you are going to get here. So anytime you see two numbers separated by minus, they are squared. This will always be the result. No need to solve further or disturb yourself. Just write them in two different buses. One of the uh, buses carries plus, the other bus carries minus. You are good to go. Over S minus 2. Even after this simplification, if you substitute S to be 2, you will still get 0. But the reason we substituted it is so that we can be able to do some division before we substitute. That is the reason we simplify it. Here we have bracket s minus 2. Here you have bracket s minus 2. It means s minus 2 divided by s minus 2. That is 1. You are left with s plus 2. This function is in its simplest form. Now you can substitute s tends to 2. That will give you 2 plus 2 to be equal to 4. So that is the limit. The previous question we solved, where we factorize uh, uh, the quadratic expression, you can solve that using L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule says that if you are given a function, and in that function, when you substitute and you get 0, you can differentiate each of them. Differentiate the numerator on their own, or differentiate the denominator on their own. But factorization and simplification is not too difficult for us, so we do not resolve to that yet. Look at this function. S squared minus 1. S plus 1. 
as earth stands to two. Let's look at something. If S stands to two, if you put two here, you have two plus one, that is a three. If you have two here, two squared is four. Four minus one, that is three. Three divided by three is one. So this function, from the from the best of my knowledge, it will not give you zero. Look at this. 2 squared minus 1 over 2 plus 1. This is 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. This is 1. So this is very, very correct. But to play safe, I usually recommend that you simplify since it will not cost you anything. Here is s squared minus 1. This is the same thing as s squared minus 1 squared. We did not change anything because one squared will remain one over s plus one. And I told you once you have two values separated by minus and each of them are squared, it is the same thing as you add them first, then you subtract them over s plus one. So from here we have s plus one at the top. We have s plus 1 at the bottom. This one divided by this one, we are left with s minus 1. And what is s? It tends to 2. If you put 2 here, 2 minus 1, that is 1. You've gotten your answer. In any way, you will get 1. Let's look at this function. We are finding the limit of cos s over s minus 2 as s tends to 0. If s is 0, what is cos 0? Cos 0 is 1. Ladies and gentlemen, if you still don't understand or know that cos 0 is 1, go and check out my trigonometry video. Please, don't skip any class. Anyway, cos 0 is 1 over 0 minus 2. That is minus 2. Substitute did not give us 0, so we are good to go with that. If you are given trigonometric function after substituting you get zero and you see that you cannot simplify the function what you should do is that differentiate the top differentiate the bottom then you substitute the limit with that you will get a typical answer what is differentiation as you go further you will see how to differentiate basic trigonometric function for example when you differentiate sine s you will get cos s when you differentiate cos s, you get minus sine s. So, when you integrate cos s, you get sine s. When you integrate sine s, you get minus cos s. Differentiation and integration, well, they are worse and opposite. With this, I think we come to the end of this episode. Yes, we do. If you found this helpful, why not subscribe to this channel and tell your friends about the Flash Tenors YouTube channel. Ladies and gentlemen, Get the Flash Learner Jam app and play with questions. I can't wait to see you in the next episode where we shall be introducing differentiation. Take care.